Tom, I'll, I'll ask you about the game in a second, but first, I'm sure you've been online recently and you've seen the rumours going around. I don't think you're moving to Wrexham, but I'm going to get you on the record about it. Have you, are you now or have you ever been in contact with Wrexham about moving to uh, hang out with uh, Deadpool in Wales? Yeah, I actually just got off the phone to Ryan Reynolds um, before I jumped in here. Um, nah, we can squash that, mate. That's um, all the rumour. I'm actually a, a fan. I think someone's seen that I followed them on um, Instagram and someone's made a fake tweet and, and now it's just absolutely blown up. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to, to Wrexham. I'm a big fan of them. I followed them throughout the playoffs. Um, not playoffs, they're, they're back into the season and saw them get promoted. So, no, not going to Wrexham. I mean, has it? How many people have actually been texting you and messaging you, say, thinking this was real? About four hundred. My phone has been blown up. Um, everyone, is this true? Are you going to wreck some? Congratulations! But no, like I said before, it's all this. I think just a fake tweet, and then it's absolutely blown up. And some of these big sport pages have, have jumped onto it, and yeah, people from England have messaged me and all my mates. So yeah, no, definitely not true. <laughs> Well, excellent. Has it been a distraction for you in what is a mammoth week for you and the club? No, nah, not at all. Uh, I laugh at it. I think it's funny um, just how something so small has turned into something so big. So, yeah, I, I, I laugh about it. and um, No, nah, definitely not a distraction at all. Well, in terms of the game itself, mate, obviously you were one of the stars of the show um, last week, um, keeping your side in it, a number of huge saves. I mean... I don't think you're officially credited for saving a penalty, but you did. Um, how are, you know? Have you taken confidence from that performance? Yeah, definitely. I think whenever you play a good game, you, you obviously take confidence away. But you know, that's only half time of the leg. There's still another game to go. So yeah, I don't get carried away in those situations. It's kind of back to the drawing board and you know, head down. And I was back in uh, training on Sunday. So yeah, it's nothing to get carried away about. You know. The only time I'll celebrate is, you know, after, you know, you lift a trophy or something like that. So, yeah, for me, it's about staying humble, staying grounded and, you know, focusing on the next training session and then ultimately the next match. Well, the next match, Friday night, the tie delicately poised at 1-1, albeit at home. What's been the mood in the camp? Yeah, the spirits have been really high. Um, you know, Sydney are a great team and... You know, we, we didn't play our best um, last Friday, um, so we, you know, it's been a good week in terms of training and trying to fix things in areas that we can improve on. So, yeah, the spirits are high. There's always a good vibe around the change room um, and the training ground. So, yeah, everyone's ready to rock and roll. Improvements? What else? Hey, so, go ahead. No, no, Tim from Seven. Sorry, no, I was just going to flow on from that. Like, with, with, is there much, how do you deal with the expectation? And, um, you know, being the, the premiers and, um, you know, making that count flowing into, you know, the finals campaign? Yeah, definitely. There's always the spotlight on us, obviously, being uh, the premiers. So, yeah, we don't really listen to the outside noise. You know, we kind of focus on what we've got to do. And ultimately, it's a game of football. Anyone can win. So it's, yeah, keeping our head down and, um, yeah, playing well, doing what we believe in and, and what's been working for us. So, like I said before, Sydney are a great team and they've got plenty of experience and, you know, plenty of great players that, that can hurt you. So, ultimately, if we're not in our game, um, we can be punished. Have you done anything on the, the mental side of, of things, you know, physical, all on the pitch and training, all that aside? Do, do, does the club and the team do, do much in terms of the mental and... Um, side of things to, to keep on edge and keep the spirits up? No, I, no, we don't, but at the end of the day, it's a finals game, and you know, if you can't get yourself up for a final, uh, a semi final game to potentially go into another grand final, then you know, you're probably in the wrong industry. So, yeah, everyone's up for the game. Um, yeah, like I said before, it doesn't take too much to get up for a big semi final against Sydney FC at, at Amy Park. So, yeah, we haven't really spoken about that, but I think that's just natural as a footballer and as an individual to be um, to be ready for it. Yeah. Tom, it's been pretty well publicised that you're going to be moving on at the season's end. I was just wondering how long this kind of a move been on the radar? Was there any particular moment or match where you knew you were ready to kind of take the next step? Yeah, I think, you know, when I came back here to Melbourne City, um, my ambitions was to go back overseas and, you know, I've been here four years now, so... Yeah, I just feel like now is the right time to, to kind of take that step back over to Europe. So, yeah, there was no particular time, um, but, you know, I've, I've, I came back here to play men's football and to gain senior experience, um, which I have for the, for the last four years. So 
that's what I came here to do, and um, I feel like I've, I've done that. Yeah, have you got any particular clubs that you've looked at or looked in talks with yet? Or? Oh, supposedly Wrexham, but um, no, no. <laughs> I kind of I'm leaving that towards the end of the season. You know, my, my main focus is, um, geez, the tractor. Um, yeah, my main focus is uh, the rest of this season. Um, like it's it's this training session today, and then tomorrow's game. And once the season's wrapped up and done, you know, then I'll speak to my manager, and you know, we can assess all options. Then, so yeah, I'm not really thinking too much ahead, and just kind of focusing on um, what lies ahead of me in that Sydney FC. So just to follow up on that, just regarding your circumstances, so your contract's up at the end of this season, so I think you're a free agent. Do, do you have a European passport or something that would make a move simpler? What are some of the circumstances of the move that will be helping or hindering you? Yeah, my father was born in England, so I've got, I carry a, Brit a British passport and um, that's how I was over there when I was younger. Um, so yeah, I do hold a British passport. Would you be inclined to look somewhere there in England or Scotland then, somewhere where you don't have to learn a new language, or are you happy to just go anywhere in Europe? Oh, I'm happy to go anywhere, mate. I, learning a, a new language excites me, um, but wherever the best opportunity is, so whether that be England, whether that be France, whether that be Germany. So, yeah, I'm not really fussed in terms of whereabouts um, I end up. It's just what's the best uh, move progressing forward as a, as a footballer and um, taking that next step. Does that mean a number one job, a starting goalkeeper job, is what you'll be prioritising? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, that's that's why you play football is to play. Um, and, you know, playing the last four years, you know, I don't want to stop playing now. So I've got a taste for what playing senior football is and, you know, I don't want that to stop. So, like I said, you know, I don't want to go to Europe for the sake of Europe. It's got to be the right opp uh, opportunity and where it's going to put me in the best light to be playing games over there. Tom, did you, uh, the, the, the bands have come out for the hooligans that um, threw a bucket at you in that derby. Um, I guess, is it nice to see that action's been taken? Um, you know, a three year sort of ban and, and fines handed out? Yeah, to be honest, I didn't really know too much um, about that. Um, I was saying to someone the other day, I kind of, I've put that to bed and um, I haven't really paid too much attention of that. Um, I knew that there was something coming up in terms of a hearing and, and punishment. So yeah, it's um, obviously, it's good to to see um, that put in place, but um, yeah, my main focus has just been playing football and kind of working hard each day. So yeah, I haven't really paid too much attention to that. Did, did you have any part in yesterday's sort of um, court hearing and, and proceedings there? Or like, did, were you asked to sort of give some sort of evidence or what was it uh, entailed from your side of things yesterday? I didn't even know yesterday was going on, to be honest. Um, I kind of heard that something was coming up, but I didn't partake in anything. Um, and yeah, I kind of wanted to stay well clear of that and just kind of focus on my footy. Did, did you, are you happy with them getting a, a three year ban or um, would you prefer like, you know, I mean, it's obviously not actions like that aren't really uh, acceptable on a pitch and for, for a player or official. Um, would you have preferred a bit more of a heavy ban? Yeah, I, I think it's kind of hard for me to say, you know, I'm not the one that makes those decisions and the person that did make that decision obviously feels that, that was best suited for them um, and their punishment. So, yeah, um, what was handed to them um, was handed to them. So, yeah, I kind of, yeah, like I said, staying staying out of that and just focus on footy. Tom, just while we're on the topic of fans, the active support for Wake has been a bit of a contentious issue. Obviously, Yarra and Collective won't be going to the home semi final. Do you have any stance or opinion on that? Yeah, obviously, uh, I see where they're coming from. Um, and, you know, we want our, our fans there. And obviously, winning, uh, been coming first um, in, in previous years has been the privilege to play at home. And um, unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, but yeah, us as players, you know, we'll feel that we'll, we'll obviously miss them. But, you know, we understand where they're coming from. So ultimately, there's no grudges held there. and. Um, yeah, there's a reason a reason for it, but um, you know the the fans that do come, you know we they're the twelfth man and they get behind us and they, they uh, get us going. So yeah, we're disappointing, but um, we we understand their reasons. Tom, I just wanted to ask 
We get all this talk about you moving overseas. Geordie's just set the transfer record. We know Marco's eyeing an overseas move. Aiden um, has been talked about moving overseas as well. I mean, there's a lot of young players there, and maybe even some of the older heads that might, you know, be eyeing overseas moves. Does it feel like maybe you're all in a bit of a pre-departure lounge or something there at City at the moment? <laughs> or you're all, I guess, this is one last ride together before you all jet off for pastures anew. Yeah, definitely. Um, like you said, there's a few boys that are leaving and there could be other boys leaving as well. So, yeah, um, I think that's why you've got to make the most of each training session, um, each game with each other and, you know, to make more memories. Um, you know, there's been boys in the past that have, uh, like Nadiaka, Connor um, and those boys who have, uh, you know, been here and they've gone overseas and we've seen what they're, they're doing over there, which is exciting for us players here. But Ultimately, you know, you just got to make the most of the next few weeks and kind of soak it in because, you know, you don't know when you'll be playing with each other next. You've, you've experienced a real period of dominance. Three great, three straight grand finals, we're going to make it four. You've won three straight premierships. Do you feel, though, like, because this is Australia and we have a final system here, you really need another grand final to sort of put a bow on everything and definitively call yourselves, you know, maybe the premier dynasty in the A-League's history? Yeah, definitely. Um, like you said, Australia, you know, the, the grand final's a big one. You know, you look at Europe and, you know, the premiers, that's the big one. So, yeah, I think in terms of Australia and, you know, writing history, of course, um, you know, that's our goal, um, but ultimately we can't look past Sydney. Um, like I said before, they're a great team and, you know, we're not thinking too far down the track. You know, we're just thinking about today's session and then, you know, we'll focus on tomorrow's game. So, yeah, that's obviously the goal for us is to be in the grand final and to, um, to win another one. So to write us off in the history books, but yeah, ultimately we're not looking past Sydney.